This is the untold story of Johnny Maloney, my grandfather, the founding chairman of the Limerick University Project Committee. He fought for 30 years to achieve one magnificent goal, a university for the people of Limerick. And with his wife Evelyn by his side and the unwavering support she gave him, he never gave up the fight until the very end. A talented and very successful amateur rugby player while in CBS Sexton Street, John was a Limerick man to his very core. Born on the New Road in Thomagate in 1914, where Kinsella's pub now stands, he lost his father at the age of four and his mother at the age of 18. At the end of his second level education, many felt that he was destined for the very highest honours in an academic career thereafter. His former teacher, lifelong mentor and dear friend, Brother White, often referred to John's academic prowess when they met. Alas, without the family and income to support his attendance at university, he opted to enter the civil service upon leaving school, never to fulfil his dream of attaining a degree. John was determined that no young person in the Limerick or wider region should suffer a similar fate to him. And from 1959 right through until 1989, he fought to ensure that every young person in the Limerick and wider region would have the opportunity to attend a university. Thus, the battle began in 1961 when the first major submission was made to a government body, the Commission for Higher Education, which brought together a phenomenal amount of statistics and facts that he was simply obsessive about. The level of detail he put into everything was tremendous. Along with the other seven people who attended that submission at the four courts, he played a key role in ensuring that the record would be set straight and that finally the people of Limerick and the wider Limerick region would get an opportunity to have their case heard. He led these delegations and he was the person that they effectively defaulted to. He was obsessive about writing notes, questions, and would then pass these on to various different individuals to get them typed up and prepared for submission in whatever format. He was constantly writing to politicians, asking questions of them, looking for their support. And he never, ever forgot the contribution that others made to the fight in his public addresses and in all of his work, he recognised the work of others. They even had some film stars come on board to help them out. There were a number of hard fought battles which took place, particularly in the 1960s, but very little happened until 1969 when the first major step forward happened. And then there was another campaign that effectively had to start even after the NIHE was established where they actually had to fight for degree status and awarding status for the students of the university in 1976 through to 1977. John Maloney was always leading from the front, right from the get-go. And thankfully, when the official announcement of full university status came on January 12th, 1989, he was in attendance at the invitation of the president, Ed Walsh, and he did live to hear the words University of Limerick. Unfortunately, he died only three months after this and never got to enjoy any of the celebrations that subsequently took place. To end, here are two short snippets of a speech he gave at the Crescent Hall on October 2nd, 1968. But what about the great numbers who were qualified and anxious to go to university and could not afford to attend any college outside the Limerick area? These are the people we are fighting for. First class young citizens who are being treated by the government as second class citizens from the education point of view. It is my very sad duty to report that three members of our committee have died, i.e. John Hurley, Gerard O'Connor and Sean Fitzgerald. Their loss to us has been shattering. Their loss to their beloved families has been much greater still but it must be some little consolation to their families to know that they performed works for the Limerick area 
that will never be forgotten so long as any of the rest of my committee remain alive. Thank you for taking the time to view this short video. I hope that you've learned a little about my grandfather and his heroic efforts over such a long period of time. I have so much more material that I would love to publish and in time we will do that. But for now, let's hope that he will be properly recognised in this, the 50th year of the university's existence.